Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the weekly reset for week number 22 of Dragonflight Season 2. We have four vaults to look at today and the topics we're going to speak about after them are Patreon, the raid team for Season 3, content on both YouTube and Twitch, and of course I like to leave you guys giving you an update on how my ADHD medication is going. So as mentioned, we have four vaults to begin with and I think we're going to kick things off by taking a look at the Avoca. So the reason we have four vaults this week is because my characters had two keys which Keita needed to finish out her portals and on yesterday's stream, the Tuesday stream, I pretty much dedicated that to making sure that happened. So congrats to Keita on her portals. She has all eight for the very first time. And a thank you to the rest of the community that helped make that happen. So obviously, uh, I've spoken about it for the last few weeks, kind of burnt out at this point, and I'm just waiting for 10.2. So the vaults aren't going to be anything special. I'm not going to push for score. And in terms of upgrades, I'm really not bothered, to be honest. So we only got one vault. I made sure they were a 16, but don't worry, because I think the druid, which we're going to end with, has two vaults. So that's the most excitement we're going to get out of today's vaults, I think. We don't really know. Oh, I literally just looked at this and I was like, oh, it's a hero piece. It would be really nice if I got a myth piece. And uh, we uh, just went ahead and did that. So one vault and uh, this, this starts off really well. <laughs> That's actually taken me by surprise. We got a 21. I decided, uh, I think I had like 23s and a 22. And I decided maybe bumped them down to a 21 because she's not experienced that much at that level. Although she's more than capable. And uh, we did both 21s for, I believe it was Underrot. What was the last? I think the other one was Nilfarian's Layer. And uh, well, you can see by the damage, she absolutely smashed it. Yeah, she did a really good job. And considering she uh, hasn't been playing so much. Yeah, absolutely amazing. And that's coming from me talking about a hunter, by the way. A surprise in upgrade for the Evoker and very close to 445. That's going to tip it over. 44525. I believe is my Demon Hunter 446. I can't remember. We'll have a look in a minute. But yeah, that's a good start to the day. I didn't expect that one. On to the Paladin. Now, I've kind of ummed and ahed about this one because we're at 2.9. Imagine ending the season with three characters at 3k. Something that I didn't even think I was going to hit in the first place. It was my goal with the Demon Hunter. Gave up on that, went back, did it. This guy could easily do it. But again, I've kind of lost a lot of motivation. We did a key last night. Uh, the Paladin was another character that Keita needed the key on. I can't believe it. She needed two keys and I had both of them on well-geared characters. Like, what, what are the odds? But yeah, we did one key on this guy. I'm not hopeful of the loot. I don't really know what I want, to be honest. So I'm just going to go ahead, ahead and open it. I'm going to make sure I am in ret spec because we do want the Mark of Dargol. That would be really nice. Um, we did... I think this guy did Nelfarian's. Was it Nelfarian's layer? I really pushed. The last boss right at the very end. I pushed so hard just to beat her. She was like topping it. And as you can see, it, the, the margins are very, very close. Uh, I just pipped it. I'm not quite sure how because single target is awful, but I pulled it off. I fully expect a BM Hunter to beat me because, I mean, tyrannical it was yesterday. So myth myth gems okay that was an easy one uh in fact there was something i overlooked and gil was nice enough to point out and make me feel bad that i think last week on one of the characters i can't remember which one but i overlooked the tier piece because i already had it and i missed the fact that it had leech so you should always look at that don't forget even though you have it make sure because leech is absolutely huge like the higher you go that it just does so much unfortunately for me though this doesn't so we're gonna have to take gems I believe you can only have 12 in your bag, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Again, we get another 21 key because we timed a 21 yesterday. We get a Brackenhide. Ooh. Oh, man, I think I have a 24 Brackenhide as well. Oh, a 24 on uh, Tyrannical, funnily enough. So this is actually a week where I could get 3k on this guy. I think it's very doable. In fact, depending on what I have, oh, I just... Umbrella. It's going to be raining, rating, apparently. I'm actually kind of happy I got gems. Now everything's gemmed out, min-maxing uh, a lot of the items, which is really, really good. And again, sitting at 445, it would be nice to break that barrier. I could go and craft wrists. Trinkets are still letting me down in terms of item level, but by all means, they're very, very good. All right, so the Demon Hunter. Now, the Druid is the last one we're going to take a look at, and 
that's purely because the Druid has two slots in the vault to look at, whereas everything else has one. So there is only really one piece that I really, really need, and that is the upgraded uh, Red Sky Pendant. Of course, I could go and get the crafted one, but I would really like for it to stay as the crit mastery, as I have here. Very, very high on crit. So yeah, there's not too much to talk about, to be honest. Going to make sure we stay in Havoc. In fact, at this point, is there really... Maybe I should go Vengeance. I mean, there might be a chance that uh, I take a look at Vengeance for 10.2. I don't know. We're not going to talk about that today, though. So maybe a Tree Mouth. I mean, it is a neck. It wouldn't have changed, I don't think, if I stayed Havoc. So I don't think that matters. I mean, the haste would be really nice in like the no mover build. Haste is what I'm missing a lot of anyway. And then just in case this is good for vengeance, I'm not even going to bother going and looking. But I mean, if I take two gems, I do one slot and take two gems next week. There's there's nothing I can actually put like a gem slot into anyway. I'm just going to take it because I've got it. Uh, the haste and the mastery might be good for vengeance. I'm not sure. I might want to try a no mover build before the season ends. I really don't know. I just like to have that variation, you know. We pick up a 22 Nelfarian's Lair. Not sure if I'm actually going to bother doing that, if I'm completely honest. But yeah, that's the Demon Hunter. All right, on to the Druid, where I forgot to change the transmog and uh, we look a little weird. I've really been enjoying this. Uh, I've been doing a little bit on stream because I haven't... I don't really know what I want to do on stream until the rest of the season. We're in that stale patch in terms of content. And unfortunately, as much as I want to do like the PTR on stream, the the, ty the days and times don't really align with what I want to do. I think they're only active from like Thursday to Tuesday sort of thing. Uh, I think they end early on a Tuesday or maybe they end on a Monday. I, I really can't remember. I might be able to do them on the Thursday stream, which I'm looking into at the minute. But yeah, I've kind of been chilling. I've been doing some uh, some viewer keys and some non-viewer keys because I don't want to view a day every stream. Otherwise, it makes the Saturday social less uh, less attractive and uh, we kind of want to keep that special, you know? But in terms of the Druid overall, I would very much like at least one tank to get all of their portals and experience tanking at a 20-21 uh, sort of level. DPS in absolutely fine. I kind of want to try it for healer as well, but I don't think we're going to have enough time left, to be honest. I'm in a weird spot with the Druid where uh, we're, we're doing like 17s, 18s. We're getting Aspect Crests, Hero Gear, and it's forcing me to do 11s to 15s to get Worm Crests and Upgrade Gear. Really weird. Like, I love the system and hate the system at the same time. I'm hoping next season with the way you uh, trade up and down Crests and whatnot that it's easier like maybe if you're trading an aspect let's say because there's going to be some trade up there's no way they're going to let you trade like one worm crest for one aspect crest sort of thing there's always th there's got to be some sort of trade off but if you're downgrading them maybe if you trade i don't know let's for example one aspect crest you trade down into two worm crests that would be pretty cool i'd, I'd be all for that but the Druid needs a lot of gear. We have two slots to look at today. And of course, we are going to stay in Guardian because I uh, really want an upgraded Tree Mouth more than anything, to be honest. So see what we get. Hopefully we get an upgrade. Two slots, as mentioned. Is that a weapon? Yeah. Oh, we got Speed. Myth, Weapon Speed, Versatility Mastery. Not the worst. I mean, we have crit haste at the minute. It doesn't have haste, but I mean, we get speed. We get to be a speedy bit. Avoidance on a neck. So there are two stat priorities for Guardian Druid that I keep forgetting because you can either go survivability or you can go uh, straight out DPS, basically. And I believe the straight out DPS, you basically swap, yeah, crit and... Uh, crit and mastery kind of trade places. But for the most part, haste and verse are pretty much as good as each other. In terms of survivability, I think versatility just wins, but item level is always king. And for that reason, uh, we've got versatility, actually, yeah. And then mastery comes at the, the third secondary spec. So this weapon is actually really good. So it's a pretty big upgrade considering we have a hero piece. And this is, all right, we can sink a couple of uh, aspects into this because I can actually upgrade this one. Whereas the majority of my hero gear I need to go back and farm worm crests, which is really, really frustrating. Weapon, a couple of worm crests, all the way up to four, four, seven. Nice. And that takes us to 433. So this week, 
I'm going to be spamming a load of, uh, I don't know, maybe some easy 11s. I'm going to pull the entire dungeon, upgrade both of these rings at some point as well. And soon, I mean, I, I think for a Guardian Druid, 433 is probably good enough for 20s. Now I'm doing 17s and 18s, I believe. Uh, a couple of 18s, some 17s I've done. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't care about rating, but it's still funny that I've got a uh, tyrannical 2 halls of infusion we we probably gotta fix that all right i tried angling this one in a way that it would make a lot of you guys happy uh, as you know i am very much horde focused although my main character is alliance that's purely because blood elves suck today i thought i'd hang out by the trading post and i saw this banner and i thought uh, alliance would really really enjoy this and i can i can just see the future comments already all right, so I'm going to kick things off by selling out and talking about Patreon. This has been heavily suggested to me for a very long time, and I've put it off for a long time because I, I just felt bad for doing it. But I've come to the realization where I'm doing this content creation as a full time thing now, and I get a lot of sponsorship offers that like they don't fit with the channel. I don't believe in and or it just doesn't offer me a lot of money, you know, but for the most part, like I don't want to take sponsorships that either don't fit with the channel or I don't agree with either the product they're selling, the game, the website, whatever it might be. So as a way to continue doing what I'm doing, like doing this full time, refusing all of these crummy sponsorships and preventing both the YouTube and the Twitch from being flooded with ads and, you know, all the sponsorships, basically. I've put together a Patreon that I have talked about over the last few weeks. I've, I've spoken about it in the past as well. And this is basically my substitute for all of the sponsorships because sponsorships are a big thing. It's a big deal for content creators and it's a way that a lot of them make their money, their monthly income. That's how they pay their bills and this, that and the other. And I kind of feel like a lot of the, the viewership, not only for my channel, but like elsewhere, just, just don't quite understand that. And I know the ads and the sponsorships can be a bit annoying. It gets in the way of the content, the video itself. But this is the life we live in. And if I want to carry on doing this as a full-time thing, I need to increase my income. So there will be sponsorships on the channel, but I will be incredibly picky. It needs to fit the channel. I need to agree on both the product or, you know, whatever it might be. And I need to make sure that you guys understand that it fits for the channel. It makes sense for me to do that. Of course, with this, I've had sponsorship offers like with a lot of games as well. Unknown games, unknown like developers and companies that I've never heard of before, which I've simply had to turn down because it just it doesn't tickle my fancy or doesn't fit the channel, you know? I mean, there's, there's one in particular that's stuck with me and I've spoken about it before. And this is just, this will give you an example of some of the stuff that I've been turning down. I had a podcast reach out to me where it's basically females go on this podcast and they talk about their i don't even know how to word it relationships with dating i think it was or something like that like how does that fit a gaming world of warcraft channel and they were actually offering quite a bit of money it was it was weird but why would i take something like that it, it makes no sense I, i'm low-key still holding up for that raid shadow legends man hit me up but yeah as of the last couple of weeks, I'm working very hard uh, behind the scenes for season three in uh, preparation to get everything ready, make massive, massive improvements to the channel. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. But in terms of the Patreon, I'm still coming up with incentives and uh, reasons to actually go that extra mile and support me. The, the one thing I will mention that I have added, um, I've not added it to the Patreon website as yet as a, a benefit or a bonus or an incentive. But at the end of every video on a Wednesday and maybe some more videos as well, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do it yet. But I will be crediting those Patreons like other creators do. So you will see your name at the end of every video on a Wednesday. I'm going to try my best to put them in every other video, but I think something like the series where I'm telling, uh, like the challenge series where I'm telling a story, I personally don't feel like the credits at the end fit, although there is an argument for that and I'm open to it. I would love to hear your feedback on that one. But yeah, as mentioned, I'm going to perhaps repeat myself uh, a couple of times over the next few weeks to try and promote the Patreon as much as I can. Don't feel like you have to go ahead and uh, subscribe to me on Patreon. By all means, it's just there as an option. Just watching these videos and uh, watching me live on stream is, is more than enough, honestly. 
But I understand there are a lot of generous people within the community. Maybe they like some of the incentives on Patreon. So again, the options there. And uh, I guess while I'm at it, if you guys have any suggestions, perhaps you're uh, subbed to another Patreon, another creator. If they have anything you like in terms of incentives, I'm open to that as well. All right, that's, that's enough of the selling out and giving dearly money. We will talk about the raid team quickly for season three. Not too much. We did a recruitment post where you guys signed up for on the Discord. And it basically you, you signed up as like a melee and this, that and the other. That was to get a rough idea of who was available and give you some slight information. Since then, last week, I believe we uh, did a little post basically asking for the, the, the class and your recent experience, like provide a Raider IO link basically. So we can just get a rough idea of, of your background as a player. Not a lot of people have done that, unfortunately. Um, thank you to those that have. There are people that I've reached out to that I know are more than capable either because I, I don't know everyone's background and whatnot. But if you haven't signed up to that already, if you go on to the Discord, we have a raid channel. We will be raiding as the core team every Thursday live on stream as well. Please, please, please list the spec you would like to join on and your Raider IO just so we can get a rough idea of your experience. And of course, if you have any questions regarding that, you can put that in the raid chat channel on Discord as well. All right, we touched on the content for season three. Uh, I've been doing a lot of prep behind the scenes. I've been creating uh, a lot of Da Vinci Resolve templates and effects and trying to make my life easier because the easier I make things, the, the more consistent I'm going to get. But with that, I've also been coming up with uh, video ideas. I am going to experiment with a lot of different content, different styles, and maybe even new games. Who knows? But without giving you guys like a full list of every video idea, I've, you know, we've got like guides, tips and tricks. We've got uh, lots of stories because a lot of you guys have actually been asking me about like my raiding background, where I began, where I, like when I started playing. And I like telling a story. So maybe maybe we do some story time with Dilly. We go over my background and uh, a few a few things that happened along the way. But I'm also going to do a max and I'm going to jump on the tier lists. I've got a lot of tier list ideas. I'd never really agreed on doing like tier list stuff, but they they bring in the views and a lot of you guys weirdly enjoy them. And I'll be honest, I enjoy them too. As it stands, I have three ideas for challenge series. Obviously, you're going to get the Affliction Warlock. We're going to go to, well, this range DPS I'm going to suck, but I think because of my skill set, at least now, I think KSM is going to be too easy. So it's going to be a KSH. I have two more ideas. And I think I've kind of got like a different style that I'm toying with that you're probably going to see very early on, maybe even week one. I'm not going to spoil that. I'm quite excited. It's going to be done in a very different way. And with all of the content, anything that I'm doing, of course, not everyone will agree or like or enjoy what I'm doing. You might not agree on the style. You might not like the idea that I'm doing that type of video. I completely understand. The majority of you guys have found me through my challenge series and my challenge series is, is great. It stands out above anyone else that has created challenge type series in the Mythic Plus scene. Kind of being a little bit biased, but at the same time, I honestly feel like mine is probably the best out there. In terms of gameplay, like, Yikes, I'm probably one of the worst players out there, but just the way I put them together, I like what I've done. And that won't ever stop, by the way. That won't ever stop. I absolutely love doing that. That's what I love doing the most, and that's going to continue. But as a content creator, I need to experiment. I need to constantly adapt and change. Just need to try new things, you know? As, again, I'm going back to this being a full-time thing for me. I can't just have a YouTube channel dedicated to a challenge series. I need to do more than that. And like I say, not everyone will agree on my methods. They won't like the fact that I'm doing certain videos. Maybe some will unsubscribe. It is what it is. But as much as I don't like change, I need to try new things. And season three, I'm going to go big. And I hope you guys stay for the ride. So that's the Patreon. That's the raid team for season three. And the content that's coming to both YouTube and Twitch. Last thing we're going to talk about, as usual, is the ADHD meds and the update. So I think last Wednesday when I did the video, there was a shortage and I wasn't on ADHD meds, I don't believe, for the Wednesday. I can't remember now, actually. But the next day, I was sent a slip and basically we found a, a pharmacy that had them available, but they didn't have my 70s. So they could provide me with 30s and 40s. So I've basically got a month's worth of 30s and a month's worth of 40s. 
And because of the shortage, and I'm a little terrified that it might happen again, like after being on the medication and taking a couple of days off, like those days were like awful. I was so hungry, tired, depressed, I guess as well. I don't want that to happen again. So I've kind of been limiting myself of, on days having the 30s. I think on my Sundays, because I've been like lazy Sundays, you know, I, I had the 30s after being on the 70s. They're not so effective. Uh, feels like I think I was on 30 or 40 yesterday and that wasn't great. Like I was, I didn't have the suppressed hunger. I was eating quite a lot of junk. Today I am on two 30s, so 60 in total. And I'm feeling good today. I'm feeling good. I'm very chatty, as you can probably see. I've waffled on for uh, far too long. So yeah, I'm spreading them to make them last. And uh, and hopefully we don't get many shortages going forward because it's honestly horrible. I love the medication. It's done so much for me. The last thing I want to add, really, which is irrelevant to a lot of it, but it's it's also helped. Uh, thank you to the guys, mainly Ertimus, but some of you guys have been pitching in as well. I actually went for a run last Friday and my legs were dead for like the next four or five days, but they feel a little bit better today. I might go for a walk. I might not go for a run and maybe give it until Friday, go for a couple of walks, but that kind of helped as well. I need to do a lot more physical health because that also helps you mentally. So yeah, a big thank you to Ertimus that's been sharing his runs and the progress that he's been making because that's that's really pushed me to to run. And uh, he's been posting like his times and his distance and I'm very competitive. So I can't have you guys being quicker than me. That's, that's not allowed. I used to be big into my running and when I'm doing it, I still enjoy it. I need to get back into it. And if anyone else does it, I would very much appreciate it if you did post it on the physical health part on Discord. There is a channel that you have to opt into like many others. You go to the rules and roles uh, channel at the top. I know not a lot of you bother reading that stuff, but that is where you get a lot of the channels like the mental health and the physical health and stuff. And maybe we can start using that to push each other because just Artemis's couple of posts has really motivated me to doing it myself. He can't be the only one. We've got to do it too. All right, I think... That's everything I wanted to talk about today and uh, special thanks to the Patreons. Hopefully if I do this correctly, the power of editing, you should see the names scrolling on the screen right now. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you guys did enjoy today's episode. If you did, a like would be much appreciated. But that's me done. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.